In addition to the default passing semantics, Scala allows something called pass by name. And this is something that not that many programming languages allow, but it gives you a lot of expressivity in Scala. And we've actually used at least one function that has utilized this feature, and that's the fill method. One of the things about basic argument passing that wasn't mentioned before was that when you pass an argument that is evaluated in some way, so let's go with our, let's, okay, I'll write an increment function. Uh, I'm going to increment i is an int. This is a very simple function. It's an int and it returns i plus 1. Okay. Well, what if I call increment on 3 plus 4? It's an interesting question of when does the 3 plus 4 happen? Well, with this style of passing, the 3 plus 4 happens before it actually calls the function and it, fi it calculates a 7 and then it passes the 7 up into the function which then adds 1 to it and we get back the 8. How can we see that this is the case? Well, we could go back and make our function a little bit longer here and we could say print line start increment i plus 1 and then if I call inker and I make it so that this is a body which once as we were saying earlier I can actually do this I don't have to put the parentheses print line eval args so when the argument gets evaluated that will print 3 plus 4 okay let me call this it says eval args because the arguments this right here is evaluated first it figures out that the value is 7 it passes that into here and then we get the start printing out so that's normal passing semantics what pass by name does is pass by name is kind of like passing a function indeed we could have made a version of increment that was inker func and instead of having this just be an integer, we could have made a function that gives us back an integer. Print line start anchor f. And then in order to use i, we would have to call it as a function. It takes no arguments and add one to it. And now when we called inker func, we'd actually have to pass in a function. So we'd need to use our rocket syntax here. And I can say 3 plus 4. Now in this case, the 3 plus 4 isn't actually evaluated until this is applied here. And we can see that once again, if instead of just uh, having this, we're going to print line actually let's see yeah we'll make it so our function here print line eval and did I balance everything out there it looks like it so here we got the start of the function first and then this actually gets evaluated after it because that happens when we apply the function. So you could do this to make things so that they are evaluated inside of, of the function, but Scala has a different approach to this. And the syntax is actually very similar to passing a function. We just get rid of the parentheses at the beginning. And this means that we are now going to pass this by name. So what this says, and in fact let's go put it by name, is that i is a by name parameter that gives back an int. And every time that we use i, it's supposed to be evaluated. So come back, inker bn for by name. We don't need the parentheses because i is not a function. And we just say i plus 1. Now when we call this, inker 
by name, we can put curly braces here and say print line eval three plus four. And we hit enter. It gets into the function, it calls the start, and then it does the evaluation. So this stuff doesn't happen until it actually uses the I here. So that is how the pass by name is different. We can see this in other ways too, of a function that seems interesting in some ways is, in some ways it's a very simple function. I'll call it thrice multiplied. And if I were to just pass my argument in as a normal argument, i times i times i, this would actually just be cube. We can see this. I can call thrice multiplied and pass in the number three. Did I have a Oh, yep, when I define the function up here, I left out the R. We'll go with a proper definition. There we go. Okay, so that's just the cube of 3. If we made this a by name argument, well, if we just pass in 3, we're still going to get that value cubed, but we could do something a little bit different, and I am going to make an A equal to zero and then I'm going to call thrice multiplied and I'm going to pass it a body that does a plus equals one and then give back the a so that every time that a is used what happens is a gets one bigger and then we give back that value and we somehow get a six out of this now a started off as zero, so obviously if this had just been zero times zero times zero, we would have had zero. If the plus one happened once at the beginning, then we would have had one times one times one, which would have been one. But what happens is every time that we use the i, and we're using it three times here, this gets evaluated. So the first time a goes from zero to one, and we give back a one. The second time it goes from one to two, and we get back a two. And then the third time, it goes from two to three and we get back a three. So we get one times two times three, which gives us our six here. If I were to call it again, we get 120 because instead of one times two times three, it's now four times five times six. Okay, so another example of using the pass by name. <clears throat> if we leave off the, the arrow here, it doesn't happen this way. We get one value and it will always be that value cubed. Whatever value goes into there, it'll be evaluated once and it'll be cubed. Perhaps the most explicit example of this would just be a simple function that makes a three tuple where we pass in, once again, our by name integer. And we're going to return, I'll just leave off the return type because it's fairly obvious i comma i comma i. Let's see, and let's do this three tuple by name. We'll also define a regular three tuple like this. So if I call three tuple with the value three, I get three, three, three. If I call three tuple by name with the value three, I get three, three, three. If I call three tuple with math, actually I need one a random number, util dot random dot next int of 10. This is going to give us a random number between 0 and 9. I get, I got 333, three, three, random draw. Do it again, I get 0, 0, 0. But watch what happens if I call the by name version. 0, 0, 5, 0, 1, 6, 8, 4, three, uh, 8, 4, 6. This version calls this code three times because every time that I is used here, it reevaluates the code. This is how fill works. This is how fill can give you back an array where every element is different. Because that second argument is passed by name, every time that it's used, it's reevaluating that code. And that is 
kind of how we can get some more power out of this. It's also, I mentioned in the, you might want to curry because of the fact that you can pass arguments with the curly braces. Passing things by name, it's often very useful to pass whole blocks of code, to write blocks of code. And so the you might curry something just so that you can get a by name argument that's all alone so that the curly braces can be used for that argument list.